you know, he started telling me about his Detroit days and and real heavy, real heavy, you know, what he was into, the the being the young man locked in like depth in, in the Detroit gangs and 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 uh I have to say the high profile dealings that he was involved in and a lot of the stuff that I was now seeing just can I say fruits from from his his past labors he talked about his life there and the manifestations here but he was I noticed when I'm talking to Rob because I'm I'm this guy I'm on a different plane. I'm hearing two people speaking. I'm hearing him definitely telling me about a stone cold street dude with, and hear me, no second thought. If things ain't going the way they're supposed to go, he gonna be who he's supposed to be. And at the same time, I'm hearing a dude that was holding on to that and loosely because his mind was set somewhere else but I could not see the picture that he is now manifested but I know I seen the first fruits of it talking to him so he's talking to me from what he was to give me what he felt and what I knew I was seeing and you know he talked to me about his life and several fellows and I'm going to say a name that he dropped 10, 15 years ago that manifested itself to me like last year. He talked about some people that he was dealing with as a young man in the street and the crew he hung with. And he mentioned a guy who was titled. They, I guess they named him. I remember when he, when he brought up um, Maserati, Rick. And some, some other brothers. And they gave this guy an affectionate name. White Boy Rick. I don't know who exactly. But I heard that name 15 years ago. And year back. Here comes a movie. White Boy Rick. I jumped out my seat. I called Rob. Like Rob. Wait, what, what am I seeing man? What is it? What's going on? And, and I mean just. Just. To authenticate the conversations we had, we talked about stuff that hadn't even manifested through y'all's television and all. And uh, as I go on, there's other things that have now manifested that he had spoke on. And again, I say those are his pearls. So I'm, I'm walking on water talking to you about it. I'm basically surface scratching. But we dealt with his life there. We dealt with... You know the the connects all the plug like he just gave me he was he gave me the intimate and I'm looking at this dude like how did I not see that how did I not see that and I realized this dude wasn't a flat this this dude was old school he wasn't out flashing he wasn't out he was here doing his thing at work did his probation and when he walked away he started believe it or not the first thing he wanted to do was help people. He met, I introduced him to a gentleman at the at the job. Meanwhile, he had several artists in this Cincinnati area. I can name them. You know, I, I don't, I mean, so many of them. I, I, I watched him do show after show after show and try to, you know, he was the, the, the personification. He was the human wheel of pushing up people, trying his best to push them up. Meanwhile, while he was still not sure about, you know, he was still moving, you know, he was still moving, like, but the thing that, that was in Rob, and I think the thing that he might have connected with me about was me and my connection with my father, not my earthly father, but my heavenly father, and I think that might have, that might have been something that connected him, because I don't know how much he got from me, and we haven't really discussed that, but that was the thing I think that brought, that had him, like I felt he could trust me. 
but I watch Rob get behind people. And me and him share a little pain on this one dude. We really thought this dude was going to be a phenomenal singer. And Rob put much into him. I don't even feel good about using his name. If, if But Rob pushed and pushed. And and I'm going to keep it transparent. Rob was behind him pushing. And I basically had to come to Rob to say, Rob, you might have to pull the plug because this dude is talking he was kind of talking a little foul. He didn't believe in, he didn't know what he had. He didn't know, see Rob and I had talked. I knew what Rob was. I knew that Rob had him. And Rob wasn't revealing to him everything because I, I don't believe Rob had full trust in him. And he was right. But I had to come back to Rob sad because I brought him to Rob. And just like, I want y'all to think of what I'm saying. Just like, Rob being the man and I speak up for a guy, I got to come back and say my speaking up for him was bad. The dude was trying to talk bad about him. So it was a it was a hard thing for me to do to come back to Rob and tell him. But Rob pushed and pushed and finally the truth came and Rob cut him, had to cut him loose. But that's one of many people that Rob put his life into. It was the... The beginning, I remember when I hadn't seen Rob, Rob was moving and shaking, and I hadn't seen Rob in a while, and Rob came back with letters. He sent me a letter from the president of all this volunteering and all, you know, what he was doing with the homeless, and what, and I'm looking at him like, nigga, <laughs> what, <laughs> what is you, who, you over here, and now you dealing with the president, what is wrong with you, but that's the two worlds, Rob was, Rob was walking. Rob, the Rob boy that I didn't know and the Rob boy that he had just introduced me to was getting ready to separate. Rob's mind was going somewhere else. But I couldn't see what I, all I see now. But he showed me literal letters <coughs> where the president was thanking him for his great works that he was doing around the city. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, how does he have time to be? He down at the homeless shelter. He he feeding the homeless. He doing this. He trying to help all these people. Wind tears downtown. This person, this mother, this mother with no father and her kids. He bringing them up to eat. And I'm like, you know, he got a second. It's like the Elijah, Elijah story. Rob got a second blessing or something that was put in him. And he was the perfect person for it. He's the perfect person, person for it. Because... The way that I've been trained, and I'm saying my spiritual mind and my religious mind is the person that goes down the deepest is, is the person that can go the highest. The most high says the last going to be first. And the first, they going to be last. Well, if you would consider what Rob was and what he had uh, talked to me about, Rob was the last. And I'm looking in the camera and tell you, believe me, Rob was the last. But now I'm looking at this guy. He's pulling these people. Like, who does that? Who goes downtown? Who feeds the homeless? Who take mothers with no husband with children come up and feed them? Who does that? And they supposed to be this street guy. Now, I'm watching him move. And believe me, he let me in. But then Rob started doing the disappearing a, a lot more. But when he come back, it was more and more of these papers from, from this uh, dignitary and this. And I'm like, I couldn't get that what you're doing out. But then I realized, at first I'm thinking it's, it's, it was my, my influence. But no, it was a seed that was in Rob. It was before me. I was the only there to water. I wasn't there to... I didn't plant. I was only there to water. I thought I planted. I thought it was me. No. The seed was there. When Rob would come up, he bought his son and him gym shoes. And I didn't know what size Rob wore, but I noticed one thing about him because I'm a basketball player. Rob's shoes never got dirty before he had another pair. And most guys don't do that as a dishwasher. So there was so many telltale signs that made me want to say, talk to me. But one day Rob was up there and this, 
stuck with me because it, you know, back then this was big. And I said, Rob, man, your shoes, man, you buying all these shoes, man, you need to let me have them ones you get. Cause, and I said, because your shoes don't get dirty. I noticed that. And um, he come up, he done went shopping for him and his, his little guy. He had about four or five pair of gym shoes and he was showing me. And I said, man, when you start, let me get them ones you got. What size you wear? And he said, 11. I said, now you can't get out. I wear 11. But uh, he said, you wear 11s? He said, I'll be back. I got to take this to him. I, he said, I'll bring them back to you. You know, so I said, I'm going to get them shoes he had on. Them were some nice shoes. And I'm a hooper, as I mentioned to you previously. Now, when Rob came back, I'm expecting the used shoes that he had on. Rob came over. First of all, he gave me this big thing of socks. I won't forget it. I think it might have been 10, 15, 20 pairs of socks in it. He was like, here, I got you these. And then he gave me this receipt. And I'm like, why is he giving me a receipt for socks? And I just, I kind of looked down the receipt and it was about, I'm almost sure it was $657. And I'm like, sock? And he goes to his trunk and he done bought, bought me two pair of Jordans. Two pair of Iversons and two pair of Reeboks. And I'm sitting there like, I asked this dude for the shoes off his feet. He said, okay, but he go buy me six pair of shoes and about 15 to 20 pair of socks. And this is what he said. And I, this is something I want to share with y'all because I think this is a gem that this is something that touched me. So I'm going to deal with a little bit of the financial, but. That's why I'm using prices. But everything else, I'm going to be murky on the prices and the money. Because those were pearls shared between two men. He pulls them out and gives me that. And then the receipt was for, he said, if in case you don't like them, you can go back and get the money for them. Now, I asked this man for the shoes off his feet. He went out. He didn't give me the money to go buy them. He went, did the, sh the walk-in to go get the shoes. Bought the shoes, brought them back, and then gave me the receipt and said, if I don't like it, I can take it back and, and, and do whatever. That's how far our relationship had moved to. He didn't say he was going to buy me no shoes. Do you, yeah, I want y'all to feel that. He said he was going to bring them back. Well, he went and got shoes for me. And now I'm a dude that didn't need shoes. I'm a hooper, so you know I'm going to have them, but that's what he did for me. Now, let me tell you. This is something he don't know. I still have his shoes. I didn't wear Rob Boy's shoes for three years. That's what, and my wife will tell you, anything that I really like, like I buy clothes, I don't wear them if I really like them. And sometimes they get too little because you can see I grow. I didn't wear his shoes for three years because of the impression he put on me. That, that's why I'm sharing this with you. That's why you get monetary value because it meant something. And this is mine. This is a pearl he gave me that I can share with you. But that's what he did and the way he did it. And what I'm trying to bring out to you all is it's reinforcing the type of guy that I seen was trying to come out of that game. Who goes to the store for you and go buy you something and give you the receipt? And say if it ain't to your liking. Do whatever. And leave it. And it wasn't for a job I did. It wasn't for nothing. It's just what he does. And when I say what he does. I'm going to change it. It's just who he is. Rob Boy comes from this. And I'm giving you this. Rob Boy comes from the street. Where if I eat. Everybody eat. Rob translated that into his new life well he was coming out and Rob was not gonna eat by himself but he chose everybody don't get to walk with him and I and I understand that because I'm a man I don't have a lot of people that I'm around and everybody knows what I'm getting ready to say is the truth if I'd have met Rob on the street he wouldn't have had the time if I knew what he did, we would have never crossed paths and we'd have never had nothing in common. But because of the way I met him, I got to see him as the dishwasher or who I thought was just the dishwasher. 
And then he sprang up to this whole different thing. Then he got to look at me. And then he made a choice. And I, my world, crossed into his world. Now I'm getting ready to say this to you. Rob gave me the choice not to bring up this part that I'm going to bring up. But I'm choosing to give it to y'all. I started trying to find out. And lo and behold, he let me in. And there were things Rob was doing. Like he had this one situation he did and it didn't, it didn't go good. I, I can only give you a surface. But there was a great, some great amounts of uh, paraphernalia that was taken from him. And Rob came over and he was making decisions that was very frightening to me because he knew the guy was wrong for and and I couldn't share this with Rob back then but I felt exactly how he felt and I had no sympathy cuz I don't believe in you don't take from a guy that's doing things or moving or I don't care if he if he's this great businessman or, or if he's this drug dealer. If he's this great businessman, you don't rob him. You ask him, can I work? You ask him to put me on. See, and I, I have a, 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 a dark past. And my thing is, if he's, a, if he's a street guy and he's out there putting his life on the line, you don't take from that man. You ask him to put you on. So that. When he started sharing with me, now we got a little bond, and he brought that forward in my head, but I couldn't share it with him because Rob was on the edge to do something that you can't, you almost can't come back from. And I didn't want to push that, but I basically was thinking he was wrong. I don't have no sympathy for this guy. But you know, we discussing stuff and all kind of like. Things and I was like, Rob, you can't, man, you can't, you can't, you can't. And we talked and talked and talked, and finally, Rob sufficed me. <laughs> I'm gonna say that and say it. All right, I appreciate. It. I'm talking to you. I'm good. But from that point, once that happened, and this is what me and Rob talked about off camera, because I'm a, I'm a called minister, and I'm a religious man, and I'm firm in my belief. But once that happened between me and Rob, Rob came over and said, Nate, I'm uh, doing some things. I just need to park somewhere. Can you watch my back? Now, I have no part in that life, and I told Rob I don't. But I'm going to keep it real with y'all. And it's funny. I'm using the word keep it real. You go back to the show, but I'm going to keep it real. And we talked. I had to have his back because I didn't want that to happen to him and I don't want nobody doing nothing to my man and of, of course a lot of people that's going to hear it may question what I did but I'm on camera saying I did it because my father know I did it but I had to have his back and I know he was doing he was doing dirt but I had to have his back because I needed I needed him to get through it and I don't need Rob Back where he was, or so uh, yes, I did. I did. I, I looked out for him, and, and it happened a couple of times. Now, he told me I didn't have to share it, but I'm sharing. But uh, that passed. Oh, there's so many other things. You know, Rob stayed in the city. Then all of a sudden, he started leaving town and he started moving and moving and coming back, and I started seeing less of him. And then he told me about his about healthy place. And then, like, he, the studio pops up, and then, like, he's still moving. And, and uh, it's just so many things. And, and you know, there's some tragedies that happen. Uh, you know, Rob's son, and, you know, there's so many things. Some people from Detroit, like we talked about, you know, and, and, and we discovered people in his family that he didn't know about. It's so much. But it's the tragedy parts, that's Rob's, that's Rob's pearls. But I just want to mention, there was a lot of back and forth, you know, and, and you know, and then he was still seeing people from Detroit, and they was coming down, and he was going up, and then I met his family. But, uh, 
you know, this is this like I'm doing this. This is joy for me because I don't see the maturation of what I saw the seed of. Rob was trying to. He had a calling. Rob had a calling, and he would. It was pulling on him, even though he was still in darkness. Now, ain't God good? Now, if God can look on Rob and everything he was doing and helped him pull him out and helped him with his call. I hope y'all don't look on look on me because I looked out for his back too. But if you do, it is what it is. Anyway, but Rob start we like I felt like Rob was leaving town a little more and if things was going and I'm moving my life, Rob moving his life. Then one of the next times I see Rob, he introduced the name to me, Lucinda. And that I believe was it. And even though I don't know. I didn't know it. But this is where his time, I guess his time was being spent, you know, with with talking to her and doing whatever. But when he came to me about Lucinda, that was a happy moment for me because he knew he was bringing me that pearl of great price. Like he had found his. You know, I remember one time Rob came over. He was in a limousine. My wife just happened to be there. I need to get this out, Rob. And she was just visiting me, standing by the, the little place where I stand at the door. And Rob pulled up in the uh, the, lim the limousine, shop, shopping in, <laughs> you know, a raisin. And my wife said, who is that? And I said, that's Rob Boy, honey. That's the dude with the Keep It Real show. You remember all the hats I done brought? The girls, the t-shirts. Remember the show I had the girls watching? That's that dude. She said, oh, what are you coming here for? I said, he coming to talk to me. And she looked at me like, what do you want to talk to you for? I'm going to talk I about the him. man that was to the man that he is. And I was there and I was blessed to see the struggle of light and darkness in him. But he was fighting hard for that light. And God saw it and didn't let nothing. And, and kept him. God saw it and fought with him. 